Hey guys, this is Valentina Palladino for Ars Technica and today we're here in New York City at the Intrepid Museum and we're at this new exhibit called Drones Is the Sky the Limit? And it kind of explores the history of drones, particularly in the military and then how our armed forces have used them throughout the years and some of the modern applications. So we're going to go inside and take a look at all the different types of drones that have been useful in different industries throughout the ages. I'm Professor Missy Cummings. I'm the co-curator of this exhibit, and I am also a professor of the Humans and Autonomy Laboratory at Duke University, and I've been doing drone research for my whole professional life. And in fact, I was a military pilot uh, for many years before that and had exposure to drones in that capacity as well. I was one of the first female fighter pilots for the U.S. Navy and it was there that I actually saw drone technologies but embodied inside manned aircraft. So my F-18 landed itself by itself way better than I ever could consistently and that's true for all pilots. And so I started to see this automated technology of the planes really flying themselves and I was only there to babysit them. And I was also part of a drone squadron where you had early drones that would be flown in and around for target shooting. A couple of years ago, the U.S. Air Force passed a milestone in that it's actually now safer for the Air Force to send a drone on a fighter-bomber mission than a piloted mission, and that's because humans make mistakes, and we're, we're humans, we're fragile, we need sleep, we have to eat. Drones don't need that. Drones can hang out over a target for 24 hours, and a human can't do that. So the word drone, as far as we can tell, originated in the military, and so um, many years, like around the World War II era, to connotate a dumb, stupid, or just a target. So they drone equaled target in the military vernacular. And then over time, you know, the people in the military still called it drone, even when it left the areas of dumb, stupid bomb to relatively smarter and more capable flying machine. But drone stuck, I think it sticks because it's easier to say than unmanned aerial sure. vehicle. So I think there's a couple of very important myths about drones. First of all, that drones in the military are primarily used for killing. That's actually not true. About 95% of all drone missions are used really just for surveillance. And there's only a very few um, missions that are weaponized. So the exhibit takes viewers from the about the World War I era, World War II, through the military applications of drones, Korea, Vietnam, then the Gulf War, then they started to come into the national consciousness, really around the Gulf War use, and then after that, the technology started to merge into the commercial world, and so, and that's exactly what happens in the exhibit too, that now you start to see the commercial applications of drones anywhere from the humanitarian efforts for blood delivery, for example, Zipline is a company who is featured in the exhibit, to hurricane monitoring, to other climate change monitoring, and then we look at arts and entertainment. A couple of my favorite elements of the exhibit, companies like Cirque du Soleil, who have used them uh, and still use them today. One of them is the flying dress from Lady Gaga. So when she did this a few years ago, I was one of the first people to tweet it around that this was really a hallmark of where drone aviation is gonna go. And, and I think it kind of missed most people. They didn't realize the dramatic implications of letting a drone fly a person around, even on the stage. So I think both in terms of the visual aesthetics as well as the underlying meaning of what it can do. My other favorite one is the drone racing goggles that you get to look in and you get to see what it's like to be a person who is racing through a track and a course and trying to do all these crazy maneuvers. Um, it might, you know, it might make people feel a little dizzy, but I think it's really compelling to see how fun that really is. One of my favorite areas of research that I'm actively working right now is this idea of your own personal transportation drone, the one that can take me to LaGuardia back and forth. That technology is not going to happen tomorrow, but it's definitely in the works. People are trying to make this happen. And whether or not you'll see it in five to ten years, 
it was still kind of an open question, but you know, if you think it and you can build it, my child will probably fly in some version of a personal air transportation drone in her lifetime. So that exhibit was really interesting, particularly Lady Gaga's flying dress and the idea of having your own personal transportation system. And also, just as somebody who has never actually flown a commercial drone before, trying that out here was really interesting. It is incredibly hard. <laughs> it's very hard to get the speed and the direction just right. So that was a really interesting experience and kind of makes me want to see if I could get better at flying a drone in the future. This exhibit, Drones is the Sky the Limit, starts on May 10th for the public. That's when it opens and it will be open through the beginning of December this year.